Hey everyone, today we're going to make mushroom surrounding, a Malaysian meat floss traditionally made with chicken or beef. Let's go! We're going to use just oyster mushrooms today, but if you like, you can mix up king oyster mushrooms, enoki mushrooms, or even shiitake mushrooms. Let's tear the oyster mushrooms into thin little strips, making sure they're all pretty even across the board so they cook at the same rate. These are 500 grams of mushrooms. Soak some dried chilies in hot water to soften. If you don't want it to be spicy, feel free to use fresh dried chilies instead and use as little or as many as you like. Next, we need two stalks of fresh lemongrass. Cut off the hard bit at the end and remove the outer layer. Then slice thinly up to the middle, we don't need the rest of it. Get some red onions and chop them roughly. About one large red onion or four small ones. Crush three cloves of garlic and remove the skin. We're going to need about an inch and a half of ginger and galangal. I peel the skin off of them so now they look really similar, don't they? Slice them both roughly. Now we can add the dried chilies into our blender along with the rest of the aromatics. But before we blend, we need to add two other key ingredients. A teaspoon each of fennel seeds and coriander seeds. We're going to toast them in a hot pan until they're fragrant, then sprinkle them into the blender. If you can't find whole spices, feel free to use the powdered variety. Blend everything to a fine paste. Then add oil to a pot and pour the paste in. Add a bit of water and cook until it's dry. We're going to season with salt now so the mushrooms will absorb all the flavour. If we season too late, the mushrooms won't have as much flavour and will be a bit bland. Add about half a tablespoon of mushroom seasoning or any vegetable seasoning or stock cube that you like. Now we're ready for the mushrooms. Add them all into the pot. It looks like a lot I know, but it won't be that much once they start drying out. Mix everything together to coat well in the paste. Then we can pour in 500 ml of luscious coconut cream. Stir it through then spoon in 25 grams of karise or toasted coconut paste. If you can't find this where you are, just make some by toasting some freshly grated coconut and blending it until it forms an oily paste. It's just like making peanut butter at home. Sprinkle in some brown sugar and add tamarind paste or asam jawa. Let it simmer on medium heat. And now we need some patience. This will take about 2 hours to cook, but trust me, the end results are still worth it. At the beginning, when it's still liquidy, we can get away with not stirring for some time. Just come back and stir every 5 minutes or so. I recommend using a non-stick pot. It'll save you a lot of time and heartache later. If you've learned something interesting today, go ahead and give this video a like. And make sure you subscribe to my channel so you won't miss out on any of my future videos. Once the mix starts to dry up, about an hour in, we're going to have to watch it closer. Lower the heat to low and stir it constantly. If the heat is too high, it'll cook too fast and you won't get a crispy surrounding. Use your nose as a guide as well. It shouldn't smell burnt, just nice and toasty, like a deep caramelly fragrance. When it's done, it'll be super light, airy and crispy. The mushrooms will have a nice bite to them that's akin to the non-vegan version of serunding. If you're wondering what to eat serunding with, you can eat it with white rice, sticky rice or even between two pieces of bread into a sandwich like my dad likes to. Watch these videos next for more vegan Malaysian recipes and I'll see you over there. Thanks for watching.